Hello, another video for Kings of War, and this time we're talking about the Orcs. The Orcs are another stereotypical fantasy race. They are green, they like to kill stuff, they travel in huge hordes. That's the basic gist of it. In Kings of War, however, it's a little bit different in the sense of where they come from. They're not mushrooms. Now, where they came from was basically the, a god made the elves and um, another god made the dwarves from a tears. Oh. Another one, I can't remember his name, it's in the background. Uh, someone put it in the comments below if you know. Said, them elves look amazing, let me have a go. It didn't quite make them quite right, turned into the orcs. And other people looked at them and said, they look good, let me have a go. <laughs> and there they became the goblins and so on and so forth. So, yeah, an orc is... An orc itself is defined by its weapon, in a sense. You've got things like the Morax, orc with more axes. Long axe, axe um, orc with a longer axe. Young axe, um, orc in training with a um, not quite a sharp axe. Great axe, orcs with a really, really heavy axe. And that's basically it. Orcs do have a technology, but it's very, very rudimental. Um, some things, like the fight chariots, is a bit more surprising, of a want of a better word, because you don't expect two boars to be pushing a chariot with two orcs on the front with a load of axes just wanting a fight. You expect the um, boars to be pulling the chariot, not the other way round. So, here we go. So, if you're following in the big book, it starts on page 381. The orcs are evil. I know that's, that's mind-blowing, I know, but try to keep calm. Their army special upgrade is the orcish skull pole. Once per game, before the unit rolls to damage in melee, you may choose... To give the unit the brutal special roll for the remainder of the turn. The unit's orcish skull pole is then destroyed and cannot be used again for the remainder of the game. This to me seems like the orc carrying the skull pole breaks it with no one else looking. And when they do see it's broken, the rest of the unit goes, um, what happened with that? They broke it. Right, kill them. But that's how I see it anyway. So starting with the Heavy Infantry, on page 381, starting with the Morax, speed 5, melee 3+, plus, defence 4+, plus. troop 15 attacks, nerve dash 11, 115 points, regiment 20 attacks, nerve dash 15, 175 points, crush and strength 1, wild charge d3, most uh, units have crush and strength 1 because they're orcs. Options, orcish skull pole for 5 points. Um, I'd probably give these the Orcish Skull Pole because they've got a fair number of attacks. I'd probably stick them as a troop if I'm honest because the difference in nerve and attacks just doesn't seem 60 points worth. That's that's just me. Uh, speed 5 with Wild Charge D3, so minimum charge range of 11, maximum charge range of 13. That's nothing to sniff about and with 15 attacks with Crusher Strike 1. You can't complain at that really, for 115 points, or 120 I suppose if you take the Orcish Skull Pole. Maybe take the Orcish Skull Pole, I mean it's not an expensive upgrade, that's what you've got to think, it's 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 not that bad. Next we have the Long Axe, speed 5, melee 4+, plus, defence 5+, plus. troop 12 attacks, nerve 911, 100 points, regiment 15 attacks, nerve 1315, 155 points, horde 30 attacks, nerve 20, 22, 100, 255 points, crushing strength 1 and phalanx and can take an orcish skull pole for 5 points. These are basically your orcs with um, halberds I suppose. 
they're they're still pretty good. I'd I'd probably take them as a horde because the nerve, the amount of attacks is fairly decent. They are expensive at 255 points, bulk with strength one, defense five, with phalanx. They're not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Young axe then. Speed five, melee four plus, defense four plus. Regiment, 12 attacks, nerve, 13, 15, 150, 15 points. Horde, 25 attacks, nerve, 20, 22, 190 points. They've got crushing strength one. They're pretty cheap. I mean, a regiment for 115 points. That's that's pretty good. Um, Horde, 490 points. That's that's pretty good as well. The thing is, with these are an example of how the orcs work. They're pretty cheap. They're pretty middling on defence unless you take some of the more elite units like the long axe and the like. And they've just got a lot of attacks. They basically got a lot of attacks, hit things really well and hard. That That's basically it for an Orc's life. Um, young Axe is pretty good. The thing is with the heavy infantry choices, they all are pretty good. They do a job. But I'll go on to that when we come on to things. Um, axe then. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, defence 5+. Plus. Troop, 10 attacks, nerve, 9-11. 85 points. Regiment 12 attacks, nerve 13 15, 130 points. Horde 25 attacks, nerve 20 22, 215 points. Legion 30 attacks, nerve 26 28, 310 points. Crush strength 1 and can take an orcish skull pole for 5 points. Um, they're the basic infantry, well, not as basic as the young axe, but they are the baseline infantry. Still not too bad actually. They can get a bit expensive, but they do what they need to do. Take comes the Horde of the Legion. The amount of attacks that a regiment has just doesn't really feel like it's that brilliant to me. And next we have for the Heavy Infantry is the Great Axe. Speed 5, melee 3+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. Troop, 10 attacks, nerve 10, 12, 100 points. Regiment, 12 attacks, nerve 14, 16, 150 points. Horde, 25 attacks, nerve 21, 23, 250 points. Crush strength 2 and can take an orcish skull pole for 5 points. Right then, so all of the heavy infantry have a use, like I've said. The Morax, they've got speed on their side and they've got a lot of attacks on their side. Their defence is fairly middling. But that's pretty much, and the fearless. The long axe, they're good at um, they're good at getting rid of cavalry because they've got phalanx. They're good at all sort of um, spear based things. They've got a fair number of attacks and the nerve pretty decent. Young axe, they've got cheapness on their side. That's the main thing of them. The axe, they've got numbers on their side because you can go up to the legion with nerve of 26 28 which is fantastic and um, have them as a horde or legion don't have them as a regiment that's too few of attacks and the great attack uh, great axe should i say uh, can crack nuts if you want to go against earth elementals and the like take great axe if you want to go again if you know you're going against a load of horses take the long axe if you know you're going to have numbers against you, go for the Young Axe, Long Axe, or the Axe, because their attacks to Crush and Strength 1 is going to be a problem for your opponent. So, all of them have a use. It depends what you want your toolkit to contain. So, the ranged infantry, then, on page 382. There's only one, and they are the Skulks, and they are regular. Speed 5, melee 5+, plus, range 5+, plus, defend 3+. Plus. Troop, 8 attacks, nerve 9-11, 85 points. Regiment, 10 attacks, nerve 13-15, 110 points. Crush strength 1, scout, and they've got short bows, which are 18 inch range. Um, I, I can't see much point in these, if I'm honest. The problem I've got with them is that you need fives to hit them and as a troop you've only got eight attacks which if you move and shoot with them you need sixes and an 18 inch range that's a bit low 
um, take them as a regiment is going to mitigate that somewhat because 10 attacks you've got a little bit of a chance to do some damage 8 attacks doesn't feel like it enough I feel like there's better way to get your shooting I don't think there's much point in these unless you just want to take them for the fact that orcs with bows it's kind of been a staple f in fancy armies since decades ago it's up to you I suppose at that point Cavalry then, on page 382, there's only two, first one is the Gore Riders, speed 8, melee 3+, plus, defence 5+, plus. troop 8 attacks, nerve 10-12, 125 points, regiment 16 attacks, nerve 13-15, 190 points, crush and strength 1 and thunderous charge 1. These are light cavalry in the sense that their the nerve is a bit meh. But they're still not bad. They are brilliant on the charge with 8 to 16 attacks, depending on if you take a troop or a regiment. Their defence isn't bad, actually, and they hit on threes, which isn't bad. The, th the thing is, they're kind of the equivalent to most other armies' heavy cavalry, because their own the speed's a bit low and the defence is not bad. But they are supposed to be more like a lighter cavalry, even though they, they don't really move as fast as most light, light cavalry. Um, they're all right in normal combat cir circumstances, but they are brilliant on the charge. Next we have the Skulk Outriders then. They are irregular. Speed 8, melee 4+, plus, defense 5+, plus, defense 3+, plus. Uh, range 5+, plus, defense 3+, plus, sorry. <laughs> uh, troop, 7 attacks, nerve, 10-12, 105 points. Crushing strength 1 and nimble, and they've got short bows, 18 inch range with steady aim. I don't know why the Skulk Tam got steady aim, but maybe that's a um, error in the book. I don't know. We'll have to see what the FAQ says. Mm. Um, at least with these they've got steady aim. At least they've got steady aim, so you still need 5 to hit, but at least you can move 8 inch and still shoot. There's a thing there. The problem is there's only seven attacks, so hitting on fives, it's not going to hit that many. They're fast, they've got nimble, which is helpful. Um, other than that, I, I can't see much point in these, if I'm honest. I really can't. Swarm, there was only one, on page 382, and it is the Orklings. They are regular, so they are. Speed 5, melee 5+, plus, defence 3+. Plus. Regiment, 12 attacks, nerve 10-12, 60 points. Horde, 24 attacks, nerve 13-15, 100 points. Upgrade to Whips Playmates, you can only have one of these in your army, and you can only do it with a Horde. Gaining Fury, Vicious in melee, and Wild Charge D3 for 15 points. So, one Horde can be 115 points gaining Fury, which means you can still counter charge if you're wavering. Vicious in melee, which means you reroll once to wound, and while well charge D3, so minimum charge range of 11, maximum charge range of 13, not bad. 415 points with 24 attacks, that's not bad, I'd probably just take one horde, just, just try that out. Other than that, I mean 60 points for 12 attacks on the regiment, 100 points for 24 attacks, they're cheap, that's the main point of them. Um, I'd either upgrade to playmates or take them as regiments if you want to take them other than that again it's a no from me next we have the large infantry on page 382 trolls speed 6 melee 4 plus defense 5 plus regiment 9 attacks nerve 11 14 115 points horde 18 attacks nerve 14 17 190 points they've got crystal strength 2 and regeneration 5 plus i thought they'd be fearless because well the trolls, they don't really know what fear is. They probably have to look it up in a dictionary to find out what it is if they knew what a dictionary was. In fact, they'd probably have to look up in a dictionary to know what a dictionary is. If uh, Anyway, um, they're big things that hit things really hard and got regeneration. What more do you want me to say on it? They've got a good number of attacks. Their nerve isn't bad. They're, they're not bad pointed. They've got crushing strength too, hitting on fours. I mean, at speed 6, charge range of 12 inch, that, that is going to hurt. That is going to hurt like hell. I mean, the trolls, they're pretty decent. 
Good chariots then on page 383. Quite a few to get through, so let's go. Gore chariots to start with, speed 8, melee 3+, plus, defense 5+, plus. troop 8 attacks, nerve 12-14, 150 points. Regiment 12 attacks, nerve 14-16, 190 points. Horde 16 attacks, nerve 16-18, 240 points. Legion 20 attacks, nerve 19-21. 275 points, Crush Strike 1, Thunderous Charge 2. These are pretty, pretty good, actually. I'd probably start off at... Well, I was going to say start off as a regiment. But, yeah, I'd probably do that, actually. Um, 12 attacks is probably your baseline for what they do. Hitting on 3s with Crush Strike 1 and Thunderous Charge 2. These are basically like the Gore Riders just on steroids because they're bigger base size and they've got better attacking capabilities. Um, yeah, yeah, they're not bad. Skulk Rider Chariots then are regular. Hmm. Speed 8, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Melee 5. Start again on my shell. I'll start again all together. The Chariots then on page 383. Starting with the Gore Chariots, speed 8, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. Troop 8 attacks, nerve 12 14, 150 points. Regiment 12 attacks, nerve 14 16, 190 points. Horde 16 attacks, nerve 16 18, 240 points. Legion 20, 20 attacks, nerve 19 21, 275 points. Crush Strength 1, Thunderous Charge 2. These are basically like the Gore Riders on steroids. These are pretty decent. I'd probably start off as a regiment because the number of attacks. It, I feel like the number of attacks and the nerve kind of eked out to be where you start off if you want to go for the Gore Chariots. Trooping bad, but for the points cost, you might as well just go for the for the regiment or make them even a bigger unit if you so desire. Skulk Raider Chariots are regular. Speed 8, melee 4+, plus, range 5+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. Troop 8 attacks, nerve 10-12, 115 points. Regiment 12 attacks, nerve 12-14, 145 points. Crush Strike 1, Thunder Charge 1, short bows which are 18 inch range. 4 attacks on shooting with a troop, 6 attacks on shooting with a regiment and they've got steady aim. Um, I, I'd say treat them like a cheap version of the Gore Chariots. Reason being is they don't hit as hard, their defensive capabilities isn't as good, but they've still got Crushing Strength 1 and Thunderous Charge 1, which means it, they can still cause a fair bit of damage. Again, a Chaken as a regiment for 145 points, that's not bad. Um, as a troop, 115 points for 8 attacks on the troop, it, it's still not bad though, it's still not bad. But I'd take them as a regiment, to be honest, because at least then they're still fairly cheap and they can still do something. Um, Notice I've not talked about them much in a range sense because... Take take them as a regiment for that because 12 attacks, you're probably going to hit something at least. You're probably going to hit something. Finally then, there are the fight wagons. These are the ones that I've been saying that are both pushing the chariots with two orcs on the front going... Yeah! Sort of thing, which I think is funny. Spoilers. So, speed 7, melee 3+. plus. There are regular, by the way. Defense 5+. plus. Troop, 12 attacks. Nerve, dash 13, 155 points. Regiment, 18 attacks. Nerve, dash 15, 195 points. Horde, 24 attacks. Nerve, dash 17, 245 points. Legion, 30 attacks. Nerve, dash 20. 285 points they've got crushing strength for one these are actually brilliant they've got the their speed isn't as good as the gold chariots by one so they've got two inch less charge range which might be a problem in some cases i can see that they but they have more attacks their nerve is a little bit less yes but they are fearless so they can't be wavered but the amount of attacks is just ridiculous. They're only slightly more expensive than the normal Gore Chariots. I mean, um, Horde, Regiment and Troops are only 5 points more. And Legion's only 10 points more. Um, no, they've not got Thunderous Charge, but the amount of attacks. Whew. Um, 
which one would I start off? Any. Any of them's pretty good. I mean, a troop has got 12 attacks. A regiment's got 18. A horde's got 24. A legion's got 30. It writes it's itself. <laughs> Just go for any. It's pretty amazing. The monster, then, on page 383. Strangely enough, there's only one. Hmm. It is the war drum. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. 3 attacks, nerve, dash 11, 80 points. Crush strength 1, rally 2, orc only. So, anything with the keyword orc, this only affects the rallying, should I say. Options, only a single upgrade can be chosen. So, you can take one or the other per um, war drum. Either mount on a war wagon, increasing speed to 8 to gain in nimble and change into monster chariot for 30 points. Upgrade the unit with dread for 30 points. Note the base size cannot be increased beyond 50 mil or or um, chariot base, which is 50 mil by 100 mil, if mounted. This is not bad. I'd, I'd probably mount on a war wagon if I take any upgrades because dread isn't bad, but you have to be close to the enemy. And these aren't going to last long. These are basically your cheap inspiring. They will last a bit longer because your opponent will have to deal with them. Um, they are pretty, pretty decent as all things go because Rally um, is really good for helping with nerve tests. And three attacks, I mean, at least you can hit something some, somewhat. Um, speed 5 means they can keep up with everything else apart from uh, more acts, which they're a bit faster than them with their wild charge. They don't help with trolls because, well, trolls. Um, would I would I actually give the give it dread? Um, maybe um, I'm more inclined to go with a battle a war wagon because at least it can move a bit. And if you want to have a lot of go riders or fight wagons, I mean, it's going to be really good on the fight wagons. On a fight wagon, on a legion of nerve daft 20, that's that's going to be, ah, uh, that is going to be impressive. Um, don't go mad on them, but don't count them out. The Titan then, on page 383. Only one, and it is the Giant. Speed 7, melee 4+, plus, defense 5+, plus. attacks d6 plus 8, nerve 18, 20, 225 points. It's got Brutal, it's got Crushing Strength 4, it's got Fury, it's got Strider, it's a giant, it hurts things, it hurts things a lot. Minimum of 9 attacks, maximum of 14. With a nerve of 18, 20, it's going to be around a fair bit. If it gets in combat with you, it's going to kill something. <laughs> It's a giant. Every orc army should have one. <laughs> I know that's going to be a short thing to say, but giants are brilliant. The only downside is it's really high up, so it's going to be really easy to hit it. But it's a giant. It's, it's just brilliant. Heroes next, starting on page 383. I don't know what's swimming around. Heroes then, starting on page 383. Starting with the Crudger, and he's a heavy infantry hero. Speed 5, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 5 attacks, nerve 12 14, 95 points. Crush strength 2, individual, inspiring, mighty. Options mount on a gore, increase speed to 8, and change into hero, cavalry for 35 points. Orky skull pole for 5 points. Um. Background rise, I don't know how an orcish score pole would work for them, but you know, it's an option. Uh, Gaka Max Bloody Banner, you can only have one of these in your army. Aura, wild charge plus one, heavy infantry only. Wow, that's going to be really good on Morax. For 10 points, this upgrade cannot be taken in addition to a gore mount, you sneaky buggers, mantic. <laughs> but can they take an orcish score pole as well? Um, Crudges and ain't bad. 
um, they're cheap inspiring that can actually survive stuff <laughs> um I'd actually put these into combat. I mean, they've only got five attacks, but Crusher's Strength 2, hitting on threes, they are going to be a thorn in your opponent's side if they're not careful. So, just be careful on that. Just be careful on that. Next, we have the Crudger on Gore Chariot. Speed 8, melee 3, plus, defense 5, plus. Five attacks, nerve 13, 15, 140 points. Crush Strength 2, inspiring, nimble, thunder charge 1. Um, hard yes on these to be honest. <laughs> um, five attacks sitting on threes might be a bit low, but Crusher Strength 2 and Thunder Charge 1 kind of outweigh that because, at least in that way, they are going to be a serious problem even to really heavy stuff. They cannot be ignored. Next, we have the Crudger on the Winged Slasher. Speed 10, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. It's a Titan hero. And the Crudger on the Go Chariot is a Chariot Hero, by the way. In case you didn't notice. Um, back to the Crudger on Wing Slasher. <laughs> 10 attacks, Nerve 17, 19, 285 points. Crush Strength 3, Fly, Fury, Inspiring and Nimble. It's pretty decent. Decent, yes it is. Shouldn't I say? It's got Fury, so it can do counter charges, which... Pretty good, pretty good. 10 attacks, hitting on 3s. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a bit expensive, but considering what it does, it's going to be expensive. It's going to be expensive. Flagger is a heavy infantry hero. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. One attack, nerve, 911, 50 points. Crush strength 1, individual and inspiring. Uh, mount on the go, increase speed to 8 and change into hero cavalry for 25 points. It's very cheap inspiring, that's all it is, and I just go with a crudger because yes it's 45 points more, but it can do 45 points more worth of damage. Crusher is a heavy infantry hero. Speed 5, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 3 attacks, nerve 10, 12, 50 points. Crush strength 2, individual. Mountain a gore, increasing speed to 8 and then changing to hero cavalry for 25 points. Um, it's a cheap hero that can smash things. I'd still go with a Crudger because it's 45 points more, but again, it's 45 points more worth of damage. It's mighty, so your opponent can't ignore it like other heroes. I'd, mm, I, I won't bother with a Crusher. It's only three attacks. It's not going to be that powerful. Troll Bruiser is a large infantry hero. Speed 6, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 5 attacks, Nerve 12, 15, 110 points. Crusher Strength 2, Inspiring, Troll only, surprisingly. Nimble, Regeneration 5+. plus. If you take in quite a few Trolls, then yes, otherwise, maybe. The thing with it is, it's a cheap, big bruising hero that's not bad. I'd like it to have about 7 attacks, but that's just me. Um, I don't think it's too bad still. I don't think it's too bad still. Godspeaker then is a heavy infantry hero. Spellcaster rank 1. Speed 5 plus, melee 4 plus, defense 4 plus. 1 attack, nerve 10, 12, 70 points. Crush strength 1, an individual. Tribal magic. For each friendly core heavy infantry regiment, heavy infantry horde, or heavy infantry legion within 6 inch, increase the amount of dice rolled with bane, chant, drain life, fireball, heal. And hex by one to a maximum of plus three. That's not going to be hard to pull off because you're going to have a lot of them, I guarantee. Yeah, they come with fireball seven as a starting spell. You can mount it on the go, increasing speed to eight, and change into hero cavalry for twenty-five points. Maybe that's not bad. At least it gets you moving around. It can take bane chant two for twenty points or three if it replaces fireball. Maybe because bane chant is awesome, it gives you. Uh, an extra crushing strength, which for orcs means you can really do some damage on heavy stuff like giants or earth elementals. They are going to fear the god speaker a lot, I feel. Uh, drain life 4 for 20 points, maybe, maybe. Heal 2 for 15 points. That's only going to be good if the tribal magic is in effect, otherwise it's fair to middling worth of nothing. Hex 2 for 10 points is not bad. Blood Bowl Boil 1 for 30 points. 
Um, probably on the blood board because the amount of wounds your opponent's going to take from the amount of units you're going to have, that's going to be a thing I think you're probably going to think of. Um, I wouldn't go Hell for Leather on the Godspeaker unless you're against certain certain armies, but I'd definitely consider replacing Fireball with um, Bane Chant because that Tribal Magic is going to be Bane Chant a really, really powerful affair. It's that tribal magic makes a lot of spells really, really powerful. Drain life can go up to drain life seven, heal can go up to heal five, which is nothing to sneeze about. Hex can go up to hex five, and it's just amazing. I mean, the tribal magic makes. Bane Chan is easy to pull off with God Speaker, so it it might be one of your well most used um, um, heroes. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Next, we have the Skulk Marauder on Gore Chariot. Speed eight, melee three plus, range four plus. Why doesn't any other Skulks have range of four? Defense four, three attacks, nerve 10, 12, 90 points. Crush strength one, nimble, thunderous charge one. Short bow, 18 inch range with steady aim. It's cheap. It's that's all I can say. It's cheap. I mean, it's 90 points and you can charge things pretty well. You've only got three attacks though, which is a shame. I'm gonna have to say no to that one. It hits on fours, yay, with three attacks. Uh, it, I'm just, I just can't see much point in it to be honest for me next we have the skull stalker heavy infantry hero by the by speed 5 melee 3 plus range 4 plus defense 4 plus third tax nerve 9 11 65 points crush strength 1 individual and scout can take a short but gets a short bow sorry for 18 ends got 18 inch range on it hasn't got a steady aim i don't know why <laughs> Uh, Mount on the Gore, losing Scout, but increasing speed to 8 and changing to Hero Cavalry for 20 points. Raid Leader, you can only have one of these in your army. Gaining Aura, Steady Aim, Trackers Only. Ah, that's why they haven't got Steady Aim, I see. And Gaining Inspiring, Tracker Only for 10 points. So this unique art upgrade cannot be taken in addition to a ma magical artifact. And as if you would take a magical artifact, as if you'd take one of these, to be honest. Um, the only reason you take these is to give other other skulks steady aim. And even then, why would you take them? Their shooting's appalling. Um from from a theme standpoint, yeah, I suppose I can see a point. But if but from a gaming perspective, no. Oh god no. The Morax Mansplitter is the final hero and is a heavy infantry hero. Speed 5, melee 3 plus, range 4 plus, defense 4 plus. 6 attacks, nerve, dash 14, 105 points. Aura, thunderous charge 1, berserker only. Something that's going to really help Morax as if they need more help. <laughs> Crush strength 1, individual, wild charge D3. Throwing axe, which is 12 inch range, 1 attack, piercing 1. Um, yeah, why not? 105 points for 6 attacks, I mean, your opponents can ignore it if they want. The thing is, they've got crush strength 1 with 6 attacks. This is where your opponent has to really think, do I want to ignore it? I wouldn't ignore it. I would really, really think about how much of a danger it's going to be, which is a lot if you think about it. And even so, if you put it near some Morax... Thunder a charge on that. So you've got the man splitter having thunderous charge on the Morax. You've also got the uh, Crudger if you have Garakamax Bloody Banner having an extra plus one on the wild charge. So if you have both of them, that's a minimum charge range of. 12 maximum charge range of 14 <laughs> with thunderous charge one <laughs> um yeah why 
not? <laughs> Why not? Of all the basic sort of heroes you get for the Orcs, the Godspeaker and the Mansplitter are army favourites, I've got to say. And finally, we come to the unique units on page 385. Starting with Garakamak, and he's a hero, Cavalry. Speed 8, melee 2 plus. I repeat, 2 plus. Defense 5. 7 attacks, nerve 13 15, 230 points. Crushes strength 3, fury, individual, mighty, very inspiring, vicious in melee. Yes, all day long. In fact, the only downside is that he's throw, he hasn't got throwing accents that's got piercing 4 on it or some stupid like that. And his nerve's a little bit low. Maybe increase the waving and the routing stat by one, one or two, I'd say. Other than that, he's pretty, pretty good. Hit, hitting on twos with seven attacks that crushes strength three. He is just a monster. Put him against anything you want. He is just going to be a pain in your opponent's side. Whip the Outcast is the other unique unit. He's a hero cavalry, spellcaster rank one. Speed 6, melee 5+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. One attack, nerve 11, 13, 105 points. Individual, inspiring, orkling only. So he's really good at looking after the little orkling swarms. Why not? Whips, tribal, magic for each friendly core. Heavy infantry regiment, heavy infantry horde, heavy infantry legion, or unit of whips playmates within 6 inch. Increase the amount of dice rolled with heal, hex, lightning bolt, and weakness by 1 to a maximum of plus 3. This is where it gets interesting. Starts with heal 2, hex 2, lightning bolt 3, weakness 2. So we could have lightning bolt 6, weakness 5, hex 5, and heal 5. And can take veil of shadows 2. You can only have one of these in your army, which I think that's fairly obvious because there's only one of these in your army for 25 points. Veil of Shadows means your opponent has to take a um, a um, nerve test. He's pretty good for his points cost. Um, he's basically a uber god speaker, just with worse, me worse melee stat and better speed. And better nerve. And 25 point. Sorry, 35 points more. Um, he's good for hindering your opponents. He's good for just blasting people. He's not bad for healing. He's not amazing for healing, being healing 2 to 5. But have him, have him near a load of stuff to just annoy your opponent. I, I do that. Um, Garakamak is my favourite of the unique units. But I can see the point of taking Whip the Outcast. I really, really can. They are your archetypical fantasy race in the fact that they do what orcs do. Green, they charge a lot and their shooting's a bit naff. And this is no different. Their shooting is a bit naff. In fact, the things that I've said, yeah, I'd, I'd say give it a go. Unless it's magic shooting, no. I I really can't see the point of anything that's not magic, magic for shooting purposes, no. They they are bad points costed. They are fairly cheap considering what they can do. You can have them in huge numbers. You can have a lot of trolls and a few other things if you so wish. They do what they need to do. They're straightforward. Charge them towards the enemy and let the havoc fly. They and paint a lot of green. <laughs> They're a good starter army. They really are. It's just a case of get a load of units. Charge them towards the enemy. Yes, your opponent's going to kill a few. But there's going to be a lot more where they came from. <laughs> so, that's it for the Orcs. I'm going to buy for now.